today we're going to look at the Bunsen burner lab. So here is a Bunsen burner, and you're probably, uh, I've used this before, A, which is right here, that's the barrel, okay? And that's where uh, the air and gas gets mixed. That's where the gas comes in to, through the uh, through the gas intake tube and comes up, and then oxygen enters through here, through this opening, and the oxygen and gas then mix in here, and that's what makes everything light up, right? Because you got to have um, oxygen to do that. So that's called the collar, where you can adjust your oxygen intake. Um, you have um, where the air intake enters, which is the little gap in here. You have the gas flow valve, which is underneath, and that turns, and that controls the amount of gas that comes in through the gas intake tube. Then, of course, you got the base, which supports. So that's, that's the Bunsen burner and the parts. Okay, so here's the burner, and we're going to turn on the gas, and hopefully you can hear this. But you can hear the gas coming out, and when you put your hand over the top, you, it'll feel cool to the touch, which means the gas is coming through. Um, I'm going to use the sparker, and once you get a spark, you'll get a flame. Now, when you see this flame, a couple things. Um, you'll see an inner blue flame, which is what we want to see. You'll have the outer blue flame, and then you can make adjustments. I mean, you can adjust the amount of oxygen, which changes how things, uh, how things look. You can adjust the amount of gas, but to do that, then chances are we'll, we'll shut off the... Uh, um, burner, but you can fine-tune the amount of gas, um, but our goal is to see a nice blue flame where we don't see any other any other um, orange coming out. Now, you can see as I, as I mess with this, with the oxygen and such, I can get orange colors that show up from now and again, but ideally this is what we want, in a blue flame and an outer blue flame that we can barely see. Now to run our test, we have four beakers that are filled with the same amount of water. Now to make sure the amount of water is the same, I use a graduated cylinder. And you can see the graduated cylinder is filled up to just at 40 milliliters. And so each of these beakers has approximately, hopefully, 40 milliliters of water in there that we poured out through the graduated cylinder. And you can see it doesn't necessarily match the 40 milliliter mark you see on the beakers. But we're not using that as our as our means to measure because they could be calibrated differently. Okay, our goal here is to use the same type of beakers and the same amount of water, so that when we test the different distances on the uh, Bunsen burner from the water, we can uh, have everything constant except the distance, which is going to be our variable. Now here's the setup for the lab. Um, first thing is we have a temperature probe. And if you can see on the computer screen here, you can see the temperature is starting at 23.5 degrees Celsius. Um, we'll run this for two minutes, and this will plot temperature almost by the second. Um, there's your Bunsen burner. We're at, we're at position A, where it's going to be right into the blue flame when we light it. Uh, we have the ring stand. We have uh, this wire, this wire cover just to give the beaker something to sit on. Um, one thing to t point out is that the thermometer itself is sitting in the water, but it's not touching the glass. So we're only going to measure the temperature of the water by doing this. We're not going to measure temperature of the glass or the metal or anything else. So this is our setup, and then when we get ready to start, um, once we have everything lit up, we'll show you how we start this up. Okay, so we have our flame going. We're going to put it underneath here. Now before we do this, we're going to have our everything ready to go at the start time, okay? So I'm going to click I'm going to click start as soon as I put this underneath. So I'm going to put this there and then I'm going to click start. And we're going to start taking readings and you can see and we're going to run this for 2 minutes. So when our time says 120 seconds we'll be there and so once we get there I'll uh, turn back on. So as you can see, we're about 75 seconds in, and there's our graph, and our data's running. Um, water's really starting to boil. Uh, we're almost to 120 seconds, then we'll stop. So we finished up. Here's our data. There's the 120 seconds, and there's our temperature, and then there's our graph, and you can see how quickly this thing heated up. Um, 
there's our we, we've taken the turn the flame off we remove the thermometer out of the water and let the water sit here now if we want to take the beaker off we can we just got to be very careful and use these beaker tongs to do that and because believe it or not hot glass and cold glass look the same we can dump the water out and set the beaker on the table and we're good to go. We still have our three other tests to run. So now we'll set the apparatus up for uh, part th part two, or part B. Okay, so we have we new beaker, everything set up and ready to go for trial two, which is going to be part B, which is going to be the tip of the, the tip of the inner blue flame. So you can see the inner blue flame. We got it set up. I think it'll work perfectly here. So once again, same thing. I'm going to set it, set it there, and I'm going to hit start, and we're going to see where we end up. We're there, and we start, and there goes the graph. We'll come back at when it says a minute or 120 seconds. So here we are getting towards the end. You can see our time is running down, 119, 120. We'll stop gathering data. There's our graph and everything. Our water is boiling again, okay? And then we'll be able to make comparisons. So we'll shut the gas off. As things start to cool down, we'll reorganize to do part C, but then there's your data and your screen. And again, this information will be available to you. Okay, you're set up for part C. We got the, let me probably lower that a little bit more. Let me... Sorry about that. Now yeah, we're down to the water some. I got the flame ready to go. I got my data ready to go. So I'm gonna set the, uh, uh, flame underneath and go. So this is part C. It's going to be the top of the flame. Top of the flame is there and we start. And again we will go 120 seconds and then we'll show you the results. Okay so you can see our water bubbling but not getting to that boiling point just yet and we're almost to 120 seconds so we're getting ready to stop this. And we stopped. Okay, so we're good to go. So now we're going to shut everything down, and we got one more part, part D, to do. Okay, so here's set up for part D. We went two centimeters above where we previously were at the tip of the flame. So we're going to be two centimeters above the flame, hopefully. Um, everything's all set up. I'm going to put the uh, flame underneath, and then I'm going to hit start. And we'll come back in two minutes. All right, here we are coming towards the end, and you can see there's our water and it's starting to bubble up, but not not really a boil yet. And we're at almost time, so I'm gonna run this up another five seconds here to get to 120, and we're done. Okay, so we'll shut her down and uh, get everything organized, and you can get your data.